You know that none of this was ever about feeling sorry for you, right? Yeah, I do. I've had more with you than I've had in two years with Justin. Heartland is a 2016 film that follows Lauren in the wake of losing her girlfriend to an illness. Hey mom, uh, it's me. Um, they're guessing she's not going to make it through the night. Evicted from her home that she shared with her, having lost her job for being at the hospital for months, and with nowhere to go, she finds herself at her mother's doorstep. I'm sorry that I never ended up making it down to the hospital. I, I was planning to that Tuesday when you called. Yeah, that night I called, I just got overwhelmed, and, you know, I thought you had experience, but it's totally okay. She's grieving for the passing of the woman she loved, but the disapproval of her lifestyle is obvious behind the silence. Oh, I just love your drawings. Look at that gold leaf. Her brother Justin has come back from the west coast with his girlfriend Carrie so they can acquire a vineyard in the region for Carrie's family wine business and while he does his best to connect with Lauren he is too distracted to be there for her in the way that she needs. I'm kind of worried about her though I feel like she's going through most of this by herself. It's Carrie who is as much an outsider as she is in this conservative religious community who is struggling with her own feelings of isolation who understands what she is going through. They draw together through a mutual need to be seen, to be heard and accepted as they navigate this moment in their lives. I cannot even remember the last time. I don't even know what time it is. Only this leads to both of them betraying Justin. This film is a quiet, sophisticated gem doing a masterful job of using what is not said to create an effortless and surprisingly deep narrative. Lauren comes from a background where although she is never overtly told that her love for another woman is wrong, it is communicated amply through many little interactions with her mother. Justin told me about Nicole, I'm so sorry. It's just not fair. Well, this is not really what I was meaning, but she was a real good friend. Love the sinner, but hate the sin. It's clear that Lauren is longing for her mother's approval and support. She's even constructed a narrative for herself where she can't quite see that her mother will never be there for her the way that she needs, especially at this particular juncture in her life. So happy that you're showing this sudden respect for your mom, Lauren. It's a long time prayer of mine. You gave her a lot of grief. I appreciated the subtlety of this framing. It might not be an outright rejection of a person for their sexuality, as can be the case, but a more insidious one that cuts deep. It's, she's fine about it. She's totally fine. It's just, you know, she doesn't really like it shoved in her face. Her mother isn't villainized, but rather shown to be a product of her background and environment, which leads to the appearance of Lauren being welcomed with open arms, but really she's sitting in deep judgment of her daughter, and it kills the possibility of a genuine, loving relationship. This is only heightened by the wholesale and enthusiastic approval of Justin and Carrie. I thought she was gonna pull out her great, great, great aunt's wedding band. Oh my God, give it a day. <laughs> It's a relationship that has the veneer of being perfect and heterosexual, but underneath is not. The script plays deftly with this idea of appearances that hide a judgmental underbelly. Justin seems at home in this place, and Carrie can see that to stay with him would mean a future there, one she doesn't fit into, nor wants to fit into. It's through this that she begins to realize that their relationship is based on little more than convenience. We see their attempts at conscious communication when in fact they're really not communicating at all. This is seen through how they take the floor as if they're stating a case in a court of law. Using a framework like that shows how empty that communication style is because where is the space for actual listening, for sympathy and understanding when the other is already formulating a rebuttal? When Carrie tries to use that with Lauren, the way Lauren suggests that she just listen instead speaks volumes. There is a sense that both of them need the other to help them navigate a difficult moment. Lauren's grief that she is stuffing down inside herself because there is no space for it in her family home, and Carrie's realization that Justin is not the right person for her. The momentum of their relationship, living and working together, setting up a vineyard together for their future, is so strong, however, it needs something big to slow it down enough so that she can change the direction of her life. And it's not a conscious thing for either woman, but they instinctively reach for each other because in each other they find exactly what they need in that moment, and I thought that was beautiful. 
The repeated motif of the hand-holding is a clever mechanism to show how genuine their feelings are for each other. The mother explains to Carrie how this is one of those things that a deceased husband, the love of her life, would do for her and that would unfailingly help calm her down. When Carrie tries to use it on Justin, it doesn't work, but when she uses it with Lauren and Lauren with her, it does, again highlighting their natural connection. I will be using spoilers from here on out, so click off if you don't want to know. So when they finally come together, cloistered inside a bathtub as a storm rages around them, it feels like an apt metaphor for their lives and the sanctuary they find in each other's presence. By using this framing, although the act of cheating is not positive, it is understandable and even necessary for these two. For Carrie, it is a letting go of some kind of vision for her future that isn't really hers, but that of her parents and Justin. For Lauren, it is about connecting with her grief so she can actually feel it. When they emerge on the other side of the storm, we can see they are changed, and I have to say, it's not often that a sex scene is used so effectively. From there, both women are able to move forward. Lauren is able to finally confront her mother's hypocrisy and Carrie is able to make the decision to leave Justin. Because of the journey they went on and how important it was, I found that I didn't mind that they didn't end up together. Sometimes a person is only meant to be there for a brief moment to help catalyze a necessary change and then it's time to move on. The film did a great job of creating that dynamic. I also liked that though Justin was betrayed, he also came to the realization that the relationship was also not right for him either, and that he too was caught up in making a dream come true, but betraying himself to do so. And through that, he is able to forgive Lauren. As they drive off together, there is a sense they are driving away from the constraints of their childhood into a more hopeful future. Like I said, a masterful script which was supported by solid performances across the board and some good chemistry between Lauren and Carrie. The writing, cinematography, soundtrack, directing, the editing, it all came together in a way not all low-budget indie films do, especially in the sapphic sphere, and consequently it sits firmly in my top favourites. The movie is available on Tubi for free. If you don't live in a part of the world that offers access to Tubi, then you can use a VPN. I have a link in the description if you don't have one. I highly recommend having one, be it to access content or for general safety when online, be it a computer or mobile phone. If you want to check out other sapphic reviews of films I enjoy, click the playlist on your screen. Until next time, lady lovers.